Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at a question I get all the time. I'm a photographer so a lot of times when I'm shooting um, models, male, female, on a white background or black background I tend to sometimes put a reflection on the floor. I think it just looks cooler. And so much so that people are constantly asking me about it. Oh, oh, did you shoot? Or are they standing on plexiglass? Or how did you do that? And I always chuckle because it, it's such a simple technique in Photoshop that I don't even think twice about it. But people are always saying, you know, please do a tutorial on how you put that reflection in. And, you know, after a long, a long wait, here's that tutorial on how to do it. It's really very simple. Um, so we've got Rita here. You've seen me use Rita before. She's an actress uh, out of L.A. And I love uh, photographing Rita, but here we are with Rita. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to take Rita's layer, even if it were just the background, we're just going to go ahead and drag it down to the new layer icon to duplicate it. Or you can use a keyboard shortcut, however you want to do it. And just to keep things neat, we're going to call this one Reflection. This is So it's the exact same layer, now duplicated. Now what we're going to do is we're going to free transform. So... Uh, I believe it's under edit. I usually do it from the keyboard shortcut command T. There it is, free transform, and that will give you your transform handles where you can read, you can rotate it, turn it, so forth and so on. However, what a lot of people don't realize is that if you right click while you're in free transform, you get a menu of choices that you can do. One of which is flip vertical. In other words, just take the image and lay it upside down don't rotate it upside down because then it won't be a, it won't be the same we're going to say flip vertical and that will give us a mirror copy a reflected copy directly on top now while we're still in free transform we're just going to go ahead and drag that straight down we're just going to uh, hold down our shift key and that will drag it straight down the problem is you can't see where to line the feet up because of the white background on the reflection so all we're going to do is while we're in free transform we're just going to lower the opacity so that we can see, yep, still too high, we're gonna go ahead and bring it down. Now the other problem, especially when you're dealing with feet or someone standing, uh, we have a couple issues here. Number one, one foot is slightly higher than the other because she's you know, leaning back on one, on one heel more than the other. And so you might want to go ahead and just rotate it a little bit while you're here in free transform, you can do that. So you can kind of get them lined up. Now she's got another problem is that is there's a shadow underneath her feet where the light, just her foot was elevated just high enough for the light to cast a shadow onto the floor. So I, I tried this with this particular image before. I didn't like the shadow. We'll deal with that in a second as well. All right, but anyway, I'm mainly concerned with getting the angle just right. Maybe even tilt it a little bit more and go ahead and pull it back up to where not the shadows touch, but the actual feet touch. I'm not worried about the shadows right now. And again, tilt it maybe just a little bit more and lower the opacity, increase the opacity. I can kind of see where I've got it. Nope, need to be tilted a little bit more. And I think that's gonna do it. I can always move it later if it's wrong. Okay, so now at this point, go ahead while you're working with the opacity and lower the opacity to your desired result. In other words, lower the opacity to what looks like a reflection. Now again, don't worry about the white you see up here. Look at the actual feet. See if the feet are ghosted enough too much for your reflection. I'm going to say about 20% is right on the money. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and lock in that free transform. I can always lower the opacity or increase the opacity later. Now, of course, the problem is you lower the opacity for the entire layer. So it's just a, a copy with even with a white, um, uh, white, band that's going across the, the top part that we don't want. But before we deal with any of that, a reflection would naturally fade away as it got further away from the source. So in this case, it's just opaque all the way down for 21% or whatever we left it on. So what we want to do is we want to mask it so that it gradually fades out. So how do we do that? We add a mask and then we use Black is our uh, default foreground color. You can go ahead and switch or just click the default color and switch it back to black. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our gradient tool. And with the gradient tool, we're going to start at the top, at the bottom of the real, at the 
real feet, the top feet, and we're just going to drag down. Now, um, actually, I'm dragging the wrong way. We're going to drag up. Depends on if you got the black or white, whichever one's first. If white were first, you drag down. Black is first, we drag up. Because it would be feet fading to nothing in the real world. And again, you can drag this in whatever direction you want to drag it in to kind of fade it. And we're going to drag, you know, usually drag it straight up. So we get an even fade on both sides. But if you need to fade it in one way or the other, you can also drag the direction of the gradient. You can also control how high you go up with it or where you start with it. That will control the reflection. Now, looking pretty good so far, but now what's really bugging me is the white that was left over from the background of the reflection. So while I'm still on the mask, I'm gonna grab my paintbrush tool, make my brush nice and big here. <laughs> Pick a brush that's not a flower. Uh, let's go back to just a nice regular soft brush there. Not that big, not that big. There we go, dial it down. And now we can go in and since we're still on black, we can go ahead and just paint this out. Get rid of that white reflection that was on her feet from the original reflection. As a matter of fact, we can get rid of it all the way around. We don't need it anywhere else unless you needed a line uh, showing the floor, but we don't. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to, and again, I might want to zoom in, zoom in a little bit more and get in, get in there really tight with the brush and just kind of get that white off the shoes, off anything else that would be reflected. Now, like I said, that shadow is what's bugging me. And of course she had it, you know, we might want to do this before we even make the copy. But in this case, let's get rid of the shadow. So let's go back to the Rita layer. Let's add a mask to that layer. And uh, what we're going to do here, actually, no, we don't need a mask. What we're going to do is just turn off the reflection temporarily. While we're on the Rita layer, we're going to go ahead and grab our clone stamp tool. And we're just going to option or alt click on the white background and kind of just paint that in to get rid of that shadow. There we go. I don't want a shadow on the front. It's okay for a shadow to be in the back, anywhere else. But let's go ahead and get rid of it here. This is where it's really bugging me. Okay, once we get that nicely painted out of there, and again, you take your time, zoom in, do a nice neat job on that. And I'll switch back to my other color. I kind of cut, oops. And I cut off the shoe there. Put the shoe back in that spot. Okay, so far so good. Oh, and I got one more there. Great, okay, shadow's gone, shoe's back. Turn back on the reflection. And at this point, you can now play around with the shadow or I'm sorry, not the shadow, but the mask on the reflection itself. So we can go back to our paintbrush. There we go. And we can paint in black to get rid of it or white to bring it back. So I'll switch it back to white and we can bring back in more of the shoe. And keep in mind, the opacity is still down. So you don't have to worry about bringing it back in 100%. And if you pull in too much, just switch the color and get it off the shoe part itself. Here, let's make our brush smaller. We can do a better job. There we go. Get it nice and tight there. And same thing, we don't want it on the shoe. We just want it below the shoe. Perfect. So that's how it's done, folks. That's how I'm doing those reflections. Now, if you wanted to take it up a notch, you wanted to make it look even a little bit more realistic, then what you would do is, while you've got that layer selected, not the mask, you might want to go in your filter menu, come down to blur, Gaussian blur, and we can blur that reflection. Oops, yeah, that's it. We can blur the reflection as much as we want. So again, you can blur it so it doesn't look so like you copied a layer. <laughs> you can make it look like a real reflection. All right, so uh, for those of you who keep asking me, how do you get those reflections? Are they standing on something? How would you do it? That's how you do it. Now, if you really, 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 really cared about how this looked, you could even go as far as the heel would normally maybe be touching if she was standing on glass. So you might need to tilt it more or even draw part of the heel in, in the reflection or clone it in, I should say. So there are all kinds of ways to, as you look at this, 
to make it look even more realistic. But as, as far as a quick down and dirty job, that's what we just did there. You can refine this technique any way you want now that you know how I'm doing it. Um, and again, uh, I might tilt it a little bit more, clone some more heel in on the reflection, and I'll make, extend the heel here so that it's touching the heels to make it look even more realistic, just using the clone stamp tool and making that heel exaggerated. And that's okay, in a reflection or shadow, it could be exaggerated. But on the real one, we keep them at the, at the height that they're on. That's it for this episode, and answering that question I always get, no, they're not standing on plexiglass, I am doing this in Photoshop, just like you saw me do it here. And actually, usually with a lot less trouble because usually there's no shadow under the front of the foot. But that's how we do it. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.